It's Sundry Sports for Monday, July 20th. And we'll start today with the email from NASCAR because there was a race last night, last night, yesterday, in Texas, Texas Motor Speedway. Austin Dillon outruns Reddick to secure Texas victory. Austin Dillon held a hard-charging field off three times on restarts in the closing laps to earn his first NASCAR Cup Series victory of the 2020 season in Sunday's O'Reilly Auto Auto Parts 500 at Texas Motor Speedway. Good for Austin Dillon. Take 5. RCR's Revival, General Playoff Peril Among Texas Storylines. Sunday's eventful 500-miler at Texas Motor Speedway came with a host of plot twists. Yeah, there was a pretty big crash, I believe, involved like seven or eight cars. RCR, what does that mean? I'm not sure. What does KFB stand for? When asked how Kyle Busch was able to drive a damaged car to a top five finish at Texas Motor Speedway. Oh, is it Kyle fucking Busch? Kyle Busch clips teammate Martin Truex Jr. in multi-car crash at Texas. The beginning of the final stage got off to an eventful start in Sunday's O'Reilly Auto Parts 500. So that's why he had a damaged car. Uh... Yeah, multi-car crash. That's what I was talking about. NASCAR Cup Series 2020 playoff watch from now until the scheduled regular season finale on August 29th. Ah, regular season finale is August 29th. I was just wondering about that at Daytona. Bespoke post. Themed boxes for guys who give a damn. Free to join. Free to join, yes, but you do pay the subscription fee, obviously. Top 10 GIFs or GIFs from Texas. Texas turns up the heat. Enjoy our 10 favorite GIFs, GIFs. You know, I've heard it both ways. From Sunday's NASCAR Cup Series race at Texas Motor Speedway. Kevin Harvick breaks 700 career Cup Series starts at Texas. Uh Kevin Harvick officially notched 700 career starts in the NASCAR Cup Series on Sunday. Good for him. Potential tweaks to starting lineup process considered for NASCAR playoffs. Okay, NASCAR officials are considering a modification for how the starting lineup is determined. Interesting. I wonder if they'll move ahead with that. Moving on to Cowboys Wire. Brought to you by USA Today. Adam Redman's versatility may make him keeper for Cowboys. The NFL season seems right around the corner, and yet so far away. When the Dallas Cowboys eventually line up to play, they will have one of the top-rated... Hmm. Is number 61? So he could be... Defense... NFL sets training camp dates for Cowboys, charts course for on-time season. It appears that despite the elephants in the room that the league does not have a protocol in place, should a team come down with blah, 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 frickin' blah. Cowboys news. Training camp date set. Ezekiel Elliott in elite company. Even with no procedures in place, if there happens to be a COVID-19 outbreak on any team training camp dates, they have to, they just, they have to say that with everything. Even though there's no procedures in place, blah, blah, blah. You make me not want to read. You make me not want to read your news. Connor McGovern has the athleticism to demand a spot in Cowboys 2020 OL. Offensive line. I read that headline yesterday. Wisconsin Pipeline. I read that too. This guy has a chance to be Cowboys' next great Badger alum. As a center, I believe it was. Cowboys news, Prescott League's best deep passer, supposedly. NFLPA wants zero preseason. The, 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 uh, the context of that claim is a little dubious. It was, what, what was it? It was 
it was they they measured they took they took the stats for uh, how many how many deep balls they threw versus how many they were expected to throw I don't just, I don't remember exactly but it's it was weird it wasn't just like they landed this many deep passes it wasn't that it was it was there was more to it and it was weird hot fire takeaways fallout from no deck deal include possible trade up for 2021 draft quarterback Cowboys news, odds on where Prescott plays in 2021. Zeke wants respect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said already, if people aren't respecting you as much as you think, just ignore those particular people. Okay, there are plenty of other, plenty, plenty, plenty of other people waiting around to suck your dick. You don't need everybody. News. Dax no deal fallout. Alden Smith's hand workout. NFLPA talking opt out. Mm hmm. I read that too. And Madden 21 ratings. Don't give a fuck about that. Next up is the ESPN Daily. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. Over the weekend, a woman caught a tuna that weighed 907 pounds with an estimated auction value of up to $2 million. Damn. Over the weekend, I caught a neighbor's dog relieving itself on my Amazon package. <laughs> Some people have all the luck. Here's your ESPN Daily. Listen up. College football ponders its 2020 season. While professional leagues around the country are getting back to playing games, College football leaders are still trying to figure out the best way to proceed this fall, or if they should at all. Some schools and conferences have opted to cancel fall sports altogether, while others have announced they're limiting games to in-conference opponents. And there are some Power 5 conferences, such as the SEC, which have yet to make a decision. On today's episode of the ESPN Daily Podcast, Heather Dinnick walks Pablo Torre through the gamut of options, including the scenario of a spring 2021 season. Then Emily Applegate, former employee of the Washington Redskins, discusses her experiences within the organization after she and 14 other women came forward with allegations of sexual harassment in a report published last week by the Washington Post. Very conveniently at this time, when the Redskins are in the news and doing such things as finally giving in to the petty, petty, ridiculous calls for them to change their name. They gave in. They capitulated. They laid down and let themselves get stomped. And now they are primed for other people to come along and keep on stomping. And that's exactly what's happening. Who won the weekend? A tale of two quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence won, Lamar Jackson zero. When it comes to quality of weekend, the Clemson quarterback fared far better than the reigning NFL MVP. Lawrence got engaged to his longtime girlfriend inside Memorial Stadium. Meanwhile, Jackson had his wisdom teeth pulled. <laughs> Even a, even a Baton Rouge, Louisiana newscaster decide, newscaster's decision to use Lawrence's blissful moment to remind viewers of his college football playoff loss at the hands of Joe Burrow and LSU couldn't level the playing field here. Okay. While Lawrence and Jackson were at two ends of the weekend spectrum, there was also a lot of middle-of-the-road stuff, too, like an Antetokounmpo brothers' birthday surprise, the Mavs playing pickleball, and Marcus Smart and Inez Cantor of the Boston Celtics throwing down in the Coronado Springs pool. Have I mentioned that I love the NBA bubble? Blah, blah. Things to care about. Embrace the MLB sprint. Imagine if we woke up on July 23rd of a typical season with every MLB team tied for first place. We would view it as a chaotic ride to the finish line in which every game matters. 
That's when, where we will be when Max Scherzer takes the mound as the Washington Nationals host the New York Yankees on Thursday night on ESPN. At long last, baseball is only four days away. Sure, it's going to look strange with no fans in the stands. There will be about 75 different fake crowd reactions to make it sound similar, though. As silly as that is, it's preferable to silence. But it will be real, live, meaningful baseball. From the most exciting young players to the most exciting showdowns, here are the storylines to get hyped for in the next 60-game season since the Boston Red Stockings won the National League in 1878. Storylines to get hyped for in the first 60-game season since the Boston Red Stockings won the National League in 1878 with a 41-19 record. I got momentarily confused. While I have you here, it feels like an appropriate time to share the bets our MLB experts would make and the long shots they would take for the 2020 season. I'm also going to hit you with a fantasy baseball sign-up link and some pertinent fantasy baseball draft... Pre draft... Pre prep? Fantasy baseball draft prep? Because it's never cool to show up unprepared. You can thank me later. What we lose when we can't boo the Astros. Uh, fuck you. When it comes to baseball, booing is part of the game, especially on opening day. Fans boo unwelcome change. They boo players for insulting their cities in off-season radio interviews. They boo players for demanding trades. They boo management for trading away star players. They boo owners and executives who reward their off-season hope with opening day despair. No matter the reason, fans boo fervently to show loyalty to their clubhouse of choice. The causes of these protests aren't all righteous and could in many instances be deemed petty, but in some ways the boo is all, fan, all a fan has. It's an incredible act of peaceful disruption, one of the few ways a fan can express their disgust with the sometimes repugnant acts in question without having to boycott the entire sport. The fans of 2020 were prepared to boo with a vengeance, and the collective Houston Astros organization was their target of choice. The Astros would have had to endure two opening days of deafening boos, first at home, and then in Anaheim at the Rival Angels, Rival Angels opener. The game in Anaheim might have had the loudest pregame boos in modern baseball history, as thousands of vengeful Dodgers and Yankees fans even bought blocks of tickets to join in the antics. But the coronavirus panic robbed us, er, them, of that joy, and that, Sam Miller argues, is a shame. Things to watch. Mahomes getting fancy with it. I saw that video. What can't Patrick Mahomes do? That was a rhetorical question. We've seen the Chiefs quarterback break out a plethora of fancy throws in games, including, but not limited to, the no-look pass, the left-handed toss, and the sidearm throw. But as of yet, his bag of tricks has not included the highly touted behind-the-back pass. If this video is indicative of anything, that could be changing this season. Yep. Just another reminder of how that whole... That all that talk of his deal, meaning that Dak should get more money, just does not hold water. Because, yeah, Dak, Dak can uh, throw on the run. That was one of the good things about him, but, you know, that's about it. Overheard. Every summer, it's a different name for me. This summer is Skinny Mellow. There's Hoodie Mellow, USA Mellow. There's so many different mellows out there. But at the end of the day, I'm me. Carmelo Anthony on his new nickname. Skinny Mellow? Okay. Remember when? Xbox, ESPN, NFL 2K5. The one football game you must have. Sega... On this date in 2004, arguably the greatest NFL video game of all time was released, ESPN NFL 2K5. Sure, Madden, NFL Blitz, NFL Street, Tecmo Super Bowl, and Mutant League football are cool, but NFL 2K5 still reigns supreme in my totally unbiased opinion. 
Remember the first-person game mode? Of course you do. Time to break out the old PS2. I have a PS2. Until next time, remember. Call me a petty Washington Nationals fan, but I feel like it would be within the realm of reason to ask MLB to tailor the manufactured crowd noise to incorporate some tasteful, ear-splitting boos for every Astros game. You know, just to keep it realistic. They could even let fans submit recordings of themselves booing fervently for, pri for a price, with the proceeds going to a good cause. Too much? This has been your ESPN Daily for Monday, July 20th, 2020. Some sports fans are so obnoxious. And last of all, we have Yahoo Sports Read and React, brought to you by Yahoo Sports. Trending, greatest of all time of greatest of all times. Who is the greatest athlete of all time? Wayne Gretzky or Michael Jordan? Vote now. Hmm. Mark Cuban offers advice for Washington's Dan Schneider on navigating an in-house crisis. Oh, that would be Washington Redskins owner Dan Schneider on navigating an in-house crisis. Rare LeBron James card sells for an astounding amount. Braves Freddie Freeman details scary battle with coronavirus. <sighs> Jack Nicklaus reveals he contracted and recovered from COVID-19. The lead, Stumbling Out of the Gate by J plus B. Good morning, friends. Guess what? Another sport, another possibility for labor strife. Sorry. Remember back in March and April when we all said the NFL was the beneficiary of the calendar and the coronavirus panic? While basketball and hockey saw their season smash like a pumpkin hit by a locomotive, while baseball couldn't even find the runway, much less take off, the NFL sat back with the luxury of time on its hands. The league pulled off a well-received virtual draft and then turned its eyes to the fall, where it would ride back into the American consciousness on a wave of goodwill. Or so we thought. We are now just hours away from training camp's opening, and we still don't know such basic information as, oh, how many preseason games will be played? Well, that's the fucking Players Association's fault, my dude, not the NFL's. Or how the NFL will even, if, according, I mean, if the NFL, if it was just up to the NFL, then it would be two preseason games. There's your answer. Two preseason games. Oh, except the fucking Players Union is being difficult. Or how the NFL will even test its players for COVID-19. How about we just don't? Just don't say you did. Eh? Eh? This slapdash approach to a season start is, as you might imagine, well, you know what? This shit was supposed to be over by the end of summer. Okay? I know, I know, people talk about how, oh, we can't have any vaccine until 2021, so obviously it can't be over. But you know what? We would have herd immunity if this wasn't so poorly handled in the beginning, making everybody stay home. Fucking bullshit. This slapdash approach to a season's start is, as you might imagine, of great concern to the NFL's players, and if it hadn't been fear-mongered so much, so that everybody was, was, was convinced that if they got it, they were just gonna die. Just like that. It's... This is fucking... And even still, people think they just absolutely cannot get it because then they'll die. That's not true. It's a lie. You die if you're, you might die. Not even all the old people die, but you might die if you're really old. Or if you have, you know, other diseases. Like if you're cancerous, you, there's a good chance you'll die. You're going to die anyway from the cancer most likely, but you might die a little bit earlier. But healthy people is what I'm saying. Healthy people, healthy young to middle-aged people don't have to fear going out. And that was all, that's all we've been being fed for months is just fear, straight fear. This slapped at Japan slapdash approach to a season start is, as you might imagine, a great of great concern to the NFL's players. Granted, they're members of one of the weakest unions in sports. 
It doesn't seem like it. But NFL players still have one important weapon on their side. They know just how much this country loves its football. Over the weekend, Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, J.J. Watt, Richard Sherman, Patrick Mahomes, and others took issue with the NFL rejecting the advice of its own medical experts and shortening a proposed 21-day acclimation period in order to accommodate more preseason games. Using the hashtag, we want to play, stars from across the league took to social media to plead their case. What? Rejecting the advice of its own medical experts and shortening a proposed 21-day acclimation period in order to accommodate more preseason games. What do you mean, more? They cut the preseason down to two games. And the Players Association still has not even said okay to that. Why are we blaming the NFL? This isn't a situation of NFL players being greedy or timid. There are legitimate health cons- health issues at play here, not just for the players, but for their families. Let me ask you this. Has there been any currently active athlete that has died from this? Because I haven't heard of any. I've heard of them getting it and, I've, and then recovering. Okay? Why is there so much fear? And lest anyone start with the it's just the flu routine, check out how the virus leveled Freddie Freeman, one of baseball's premier athletes. Oh, but he's still fucking alive, isn't he? He's alive. And you know what? I don't know what team he plays for, but... A lot of it might depend on the sort of care that you receive. Sometimes it is completely asymptomatic completely. Sometimes it is just like the flu. Sometimes it's like a cold. Sometimes it's like a bad flu. Sure, it probably won't affect many people, especially young and healthy athletes that way. Exactly. But it can, and if it does, well, they still won't die. Just like this guy didn't die. But did you die? No, the answer is no. The NFL and its owners have created a magnificent product, and they're not foolish people. But what's worked for other crises, simply hammering forward with the overwhelming force that comes from being an American institution, won't work here. Now, the only difference is that this time, panic was was stoked. Fear was mongered, if that's a word. The fear mongers stoked the panic. You know, those in the media, those on social media. This has been a completely unprecedented global event. And history is not going to remember this nicely. All these fuckers. I pray to God. will be remembered as overreacting and fear-mongering. <sighs> the coronavirus has stacked the line. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not the coronavirus. It's the fucking reaction to it. It's the fucking overreaction The overreaction to the coronavirus has stacked the line. Like it or not, the owners are going to need to script a more sophisticated game plan, and they're going to have to do it fast. You want the NFL back? I want the NFL back. The players and owners want the NFL back. But until everyone gets on the same page, the NFL ain't coming back. Fuck you, dude. Yes, they are. I'm so tired of this shit. So, so tired of this shit. 
Game plan. Haynes, here's what life is like inside the NBA's Disney bubble. You know what? I really don't care. Brown, the tale of a pitcher's seven-year journey back to the majors. Goodwill, could NBA bubble lead to a return of super teams? The kicker, low five. Oh, brother. Get ready for the newest baseball tradition, the walk-off low five. Hey, there's no rule that the five have to be fingers, not toes. <sighs> this... <sighs> I'm just so, so sick of this shit. Why do I always have to end with some stupidity from Yahoo Sports? Just... That's all for today. Thank you and good night.